Hello and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be heading back to somewhere that we haven't been in quite a while. Japan is known as being one of the safest countries in the world, with incredibly low crime rates compared to countries like Britain or the United States. But that doesn't mean that terrible crimes don't occur there. In fact, I could argue that some of the most disturbing crimes I've come across since getting into true crime have come from Japan. Today's story is no exception. I'll be discussing the life and crimes of Fatoshi Matsunaga, a man whose crimes were so awful, even the media were hesitant to report on this case. I should also mention that in this video, I'll be describing situations that some viewers may find disturbing. So if you want to avoid content like that, I wholly understand. But before I get into today's story, if you're into true crime, please consider subscribing to the channel as well as hitting the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Let's begin. Futoshi Matsunaga was born on the 28th of April 1961 in Kokorakita Ward of the city of Kitakyushu in Fukuoka Prefecture. As a child, he performed well in school, earning good grades. He was said to be a charming yet odd child and had behavioural issues when it came to authority figures. Those who knew Futoshi said that he would regularly lie, with one former student saying, quote, He said he won the speech contest, but I don't remember that. He also pushed out the captain of the club activities team because he wanted to be captain. He wasn't a team player and was quite strange. End quote. After he was caught having intimate relations with a junior high school girl, Futoshi would be transferred to an all boys high school where he would complete his education. After leaving high school, he would get married at the age of 19 and have a son. He also took over his father's tatami shop and would convert the business to selling futons. He would name this business The World. On the surface, Fatoshi seemed to lead a normal life, but underneath there was a monster brewing. This monster would eventually come to the surface, changing countless lives. Despite being married, Futoshi reportedly had up to 10 mistresses. One of these women was Junko Ogata. Junko attended the same high school as Futoshi at the time when he was there, and the pair reconnected in 1982. His wife knew of his mistresses, in particular Junko. Behind the scenes, Futoshi was mentally and physically abusive. After Fatoshi was eventually captured, his ex-wife would tell reporters of the fears that she had for both her and her child's safety. She would tell them of one incident in specific. The following quote comes from Medium.com, quote, When Fatoshi was assaulting Junko, he told her to lick mayonnaise off the floor. His wife told him to stop because their child was in the room watching, but Junko bent down and licked it off the floor as she had been told." End quote. Fatoshi would repeatedly tell Junko that he planned to leave his wife and marry her. However, Junko's parents, in particular her mother, Shizumi Ogata, was dead set against their daughter marrying Fatoshi. Not only did they doubt Fatoshi's claims that he would leave his wife, they were aware he abused Junko and wanted nothing more than for Junko to see sense and leave Fatoshi. Before meeting Fatoshi, Junko was a kindergarten teacher and was said to be a happy, friendly person. This version of Junko would quickly morph into a cold, withdrawn Junko, who would eventually stop going to work altogether. After learning that he didn't have Junko's parents' approval, Fatoshi was livid. He arranged to visit Shizumi to clear the air and give her assurances that he had Junko's best interests at heart. But this was a lie. Instead, he carried out a brutal sexual assault on Shizumi. 
after a failed suicide attempt, Junko would move in with Futoshi in 1985, after he convinced her that his parents hated her after said suicide attempt. He claimed to have left his wife, but the reality was that she had managed to escape with their son. Fortunately, Futoshi was unable to track either of them down. Futoshi's futon company was also a front for various scams and other crimes. Here, it was estimated that Matsunaga defrauded unsuspecting victims out of around 180 million yen, just under 1.2 million pounds, or just over 1.6 million dollars. He also set up a soundproof room on the third floor of his company building, and it was said that he would shock his employees there with a stun gun. Futoshi and Junko would be forced to abandon their home and futon business in 1992, when police became aware of Futoshi's criminal activities, placing them both on Japan's most wanted criminals list. Despite the unwanted attention of the police, Futoshi was determined to continue scamming and manipulating people, and more. In 1993, Futoshi, now using a pseudonym, met a married woman who had three children. Using his charm and wits, he convinced the woman that Junko was his sister. In April 1993, after seducing the woman, he convinced her to leave her husband and move in with him and Junko. She also took her three children. By September 1993, one of the children died under mysterious circumstances. The other two children would go to live with their father and grandfather shortly after, in October of that same year. But by March the following year, the woman Fatoshi had promised to marry had also died under mysterious circumstances. This woman had left 11.8 million yen to Fatoshi and nothing to her own children. Police investigated but were unable to link the deaths to Fatoshi or Junko. Some sources state that feces were ingested by both the child and woman shortly before their deaths. But police couldn't tie this to Fatoshi as he refused to supply a stool sample and police had insufficient evidence to demand one from him. If he was responsible for their premature deaths, he had gotten away with it. Fatoshi, feeling confident after his latest scam, was ready to find another victim to leech off of. Eventually, he would get the chance when he befriended a man by the name of Kumio Toria. By 1994, Fatoshi and Junko had almost run out of money and needed to find a way of relining their pockets. An opportunity would arise when Fatoshi would meet a man named Kumio Toria while out drinking one evening. The pair would strike up a conversation, which would eventually lead to a friendship blossoming between the two men. Over time, Kumio would see Matsunaga as a man he could trust. Kumio would open up to Matsunaga over drinks, where he would discuss his criminal history. Fatoshi would sit there and listen intently, not because he was being a supportive friend, but because he was gathering this information to use against his friend when the time was right. And when that time came, Kumio was blackmailed and extorted by the man he thought to be his friend and threatened with his secrets being revealed if he didn't comply. Kumio had a young daughter, who he feared for, should anything happen to him, and so he obeyed. After a while, Fatoshi told Kumio that both he and Junko would be moving into Kumio and his daughter's apartment. Left with little choice, Kumio agreed, and the pair moved in. Quickly, things went downhill from there. Immediately after moving in, Fatoshi and Junko confined Kumio and his daughter to their home. Over the next two years, both Kumio and his daughter would be treated in the most humiliating ways imaginable. Some of the depraved acts the pair were forced to endure were as follows. 
Kumio would receive electric shocks all over his body, resulting in him developing scabs all over. He would be forced to eat any of these, should they fall onto the floor. He would also be placed into a cage and shocked repeatedly, to the point where he would be unable to lift his arms or legs. Both Kumio and his daughter were malnourished, only being fed a bowl of rice or ramen once per day and only given a short amount of time to eat. They were restricted to just three hours sleep a night. During this time, Kumio's daughter was still allowed to attend school, but understandably, her grades would be impacted negatively. While at school, Kumio was forced to stand in the bathroom all day until she returned home. If he failed to stand all day, he'd be severely beaten. They could only urinate in plastic bottles and were only allowed to use the toilet once a day. If Kumio defecated himself, he was forced to eat it. Fatoshi would take various photographs of the pair while torturing them, including picturing them while forcing the pair to commit acts on each other that quite frankly I don't want to explore in detail here. Eventually, it became too much for Kumio, and on the 26th of February 1996, at just 34 years of age, he would succumb to his injuries and pass away. After Kumio died, Matsunaga convinced Kumio's daughter that he had died by her hands. He forced both she and Junko to dismember Kumio and pulverize and boil parts of him, where Matsunaga then forced the daughter to drink some of the broth. Kumio's daughter and Junko then boarded a ferry and dumped his body in the Kunasaki Sea. Fatoshi Matsunaga now had two people under his wing and set to work at finding his next victim. They targeted a female accomplice of Kumio. Now using the surname Hashimoto, Fatoshi seduced the woman who also had a daughter. He told her that he would marry her which of course was a lie. He would eventually convince the woman to move in with him, along with her daughter, where they would endure a similar campaign of torture and mental manipulation. However, after seven months, the woman and her daughter would escape by jumping out the second floor window. The daughter would be sent to her father's while the woman was institutionalized. During this time, she had been extorted out of 5.6 million yen. After this incident, Junko began to have second thoughts about her relationship with Fatoshi. While Kumio's daughter was not allowed to leave the apartment, Junko was allowed to leave in order to go to work. One day, Junko left the apartment for work and didn't return. When Fatoshi Matsunaga realized that Junko, a woman he considered to be her property, had fled, he was enraged. He contacted Shizumi, demanding to know where Junko was. Shizumi told Fatoshi that she didn't know, and even if she did, she wouldn't tell him. Fatoshi then told Shizumi about the murder of Kumio and threatened to go to the police if she didn't tell him where Junko was. Shizumi, however, held firm and said nothing. Realising he wasn't going to get the information he needed, he decided instead to hatch a plan in order to smoke out Junko from wherever she was hiding. Fatoshi had leaked out information suggesting that he had committed suicide and even planned his own funeral to make the idea he took his own life even more convincing. It worked. Junko, now believing that Fatoshi was dead, was comfortable enough to return to her family home. However, soon after arriving, there was a knock at the door. When the Ogatas opened the door, there was Fatoshi Matsunaga and Kumio's daughter. Fatoshi had been staking out the home, waiting for Junko to return. Junko's father, Takashige and Shizumi pleaded with Fatoshi to leave their daughter alone 
and even offered to pay him 63 million yen in an attempt to get Fatoshi to leave. Fatoshi agreed to take the money, but when the time came for him to fulfill his end of the bargain, he reneged and instead held the Ogata family captive. Inside the Ogata home was Fatoshi, Junko, Kumio's daughter, Junko's parents Takashige and Shizumi Ogata, along with Junko's sister Reiko, her husband Kazuya, and their children Aya and her younger brother Yuki. Incredibly, despite the fact they were being held captive, over time they became enamoured with Fatoshi, who used his mind tricks to psychologically alter them to the point where they had grown dependent on him. With Junko and Kumio's daughter beside him, Fatoshi would get the family drunk and encourage them to share their deepest secrets. Fatoshi would then use this information to turn the family against each other. It even got to a point where Fatoshi was able to seduce Reiko right in front of Kazuya, who apparently wasn't bothered. He would also abuse the family in similar ways to Kumio, including shocking them, restricting the amount of food they ate, ensured all money they received was diverted to Fatoshi, limiting their sleep and other various demeaning ways. The aim was to destroy their spirits and have them bent to his will, which as I mentioned, had worked. As time progressed, the children weren't attending school and Kazuya and Reiko had stopped attending work. As the money began to dry up, Fatoshi decided that the time had come to start reducing the amount of mouths he needed to feed. Fatoshi had decided that Takashige's time had now come. Fatoshi had grown irritated with Takashige, who, some time into the ordeal, had escaped and fled to a local police station. When they arrived to investigate, Fatoshi Matsunaga was able to convince the officers that Takashige was suffering from dementia and even showed the officers the room where they kept him, explaining that it was set up the way it was for his own protection. After apologising to the officers for the inconvenience, Fatoshi offered to make a sizeable donation to the police pension fund. I'm unsure if this offer was accepted, but the police never came back. On the 21st of December 1997, five months into the family's captivity, Fatoshi Matsunaga convinced Junko to end the life of her own father. She applied electrical shocks to Takashige until his heart gave out. The death of Takashige Ogata sent his wife Shizumi over the edge. Soon after her husband's murder, she became delirious and was speaking in a nonsensical language. Fatoshi decided that it would be best if she was put out of her misery, and so on the 20th of January 1998, he ordered Reiko and her husband Kazuya to strangle Shizumi to death. Several weeks after the pair had killed Shizumi, Reiko was next. She had lost her hearing due to the torture Fatoshi had subjected her to, and she was severely unwell. Fatoshi tasked Kazuya, Reiko's own husband, to take her life. He ordered the pair's daughter, Aya, to hold down Reiko, while Kazuya strangled the life out of her. Afterwards, Kazuya said, So it's come to this. I've killed my own wife. Kazuya himself would then be immediately locked in the bathroom, where he would starve to death around a month later on the 13th of April, 1998. Concerned that if he kept the children alive, they may grow up and seek revenge. Therefore, Fatoshi had sickeningly decided that they must too perish. Fatoshi first spoke with Aya, where he convinced her to take the life of her own brother. Aya told Yuki that she was taking him to be with their mother. And so along with Junko, she and Aya strangled Yuki to death. He was just five years old. 
Aya would then be starved and demoralized to the point where she was then asked if she wanted to die. She allegedly nodded yes. And on the 7th of June 1998, 10-year-old Aya would be the last person killed. This time by Junko and Kumio's daughter. She was also strangled. It was now just Fatoshi Matsunaga, Junko Ogata and Kumio's daughter who were the last surviving members of the Ogata household. Their victims, like Kumio, were dismembered, boiled, pulverized and disposed of, either in public restrooms or out at sea. Incredibly, they seemed to get away with what they had done and in July 2000, Fatoshi was able to convince another woman to hand over her two children to him, as well as 20 million yen for what he said was to cover the cost of caring for her twins. Throughout the years, Fatoshi Matsunaga was able to elude authorities through his ability to manipulate and control those around him. Up until now, only Junko appeared capable of breaking his spell. However, this was about to change. Unlike Junko, Kumio's daughter was never a willing participant in Fatoshi and Junko's crimes. She was just a young girl and scared for her life. But now 17 years old, and after 8 years of captivity, she was ready to break free. Her first attempt at freedom took place on the 30th of January 2002. Worried that she might be the next victim of Fatoshi and Junko, she fled to her grandparents' home but didn't tell them anything that she had endured, instead telling them that she was on a business trip. Fatoshi learned of Kumio's daughter's whereabouts after extracting the information from Kumio's own sister, who he had been seeing at the time. He retrieved her on the 15th of February 2002, but not before Kumio's daughter left a note to her grandparents begging for help and to not listen to Fatoshi. Fatoshi was outraged and both he and Junko tortured Kumio's daughter, electrocuting her, strangling her, and even pulling off her fingernails with pliers. But all this didn't deter Kumio's daughter. She would escape again to her grandparents, who this time contacted the police. The following day, March 7th, 2002, Fatoshi Matsunaga and Junko Ogata were tracked down and arrested. The media initially reported on just the kidnapping of Kumio's daughter, but as more details were leaked, they slowly began to withdraw from reporting all the facts, seemingly because even this was way too much for them. Initially, Junko Ogata denied the charges against her, but as her interrogation wore on, she seemed to be resigned to herself and confessed to her crimes on the 23rd of October 2002 telling in calm detail as to what they had done over the years. Futoshi Matsunaga, on the other hand, denied everything. Believing he could talk his way out of the situation he was in, he instead tried to pin the blame on both Junko and Kumio's daughter. Fortunately, the police were buying none of it. Kumio's daughter was not charged for any involvement in the crimes. She demonstrated to police that she was not a willing participant, and if it hadn't been for her, Fatoshi and Junko would likely still be out there causing untold harm. In case you're wondering, the twin children the mother gave up to Fatoshi were both found alive. They were located in another apartment the pair used, along with two other boys, Fatoshi and Junko's own children. The pair's trial began in May of 2003. They were charged for the confinement and murder of seven people. Junko would enter a guilty plea, but Fatoshi would remain defiant and continue to deny all the charges. Despite there being no physical evidence, the testimonies of both Junko and Kumio's daughter, along with photographic evidence and other circumstantial evidence, were enough for Fatoshi Matsunaga to be found guilty. On the 28th of September 2005, 
the pair were sentenced to death by hanging. Both would appeal their sentencing, with Junko's sentence later being downgraded to life imprisonment, after her defence were able to demonstrate that she had been under the control of Fotoshi Matsunaga. However, for Fotoshi, he wasn't so lucky. His original sentence would be upheld, and to this day, he remains in prison, awaiting his date with destiny. This case isn't just shocking, but it's one of the most abhorrent examples of how manipulative individuals can control those around them, while some compare the techniques Fotoshi used to arm Shinriko, I also couldn't help but think of Charles Manson. It's notable that Futoshi never actually got his hands dirty, but he was definitely responsible for the deaths of his victims. This was one of the most chilling cases I've ever covered, and I truly hope nothing like this happens again. Thank you for watching the video. If you found this video informative, please consider subscribing to the channel, as well as hitting the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Until next time, take care, and goodbye, for now.